The importance of testing workouts is crucial uh, for me. I don't test every single workout. I know the feel, I know the stimulus I'm, I'm looking for, uh, how things should be broken down for the most part. But there are times when I'm just not sure and I need to test it. So I'll have uh, Coach Kyle or I'll test it myself. We'll do it together. I'll have Coach Casey test a bunch of workouts. Uh, but we're looking at three that I tested uh, in the recent past to see if I wanted to implement in class or that I am imp implementing it in class. So first one. I did this on a Saturday. So this is consecutive within one week I did these. So I had the idea of how do I do the, the open workout that we did, walking lunges, box step ups, and handstand push ups, then a handstand walk. I knew we weren't gonna be leaving our space uh, as we're just confined to our workout station. So we wouldn't be walking lunges, we wouldn't be doing handstand walks. So how do we make that feel very similar? Did I get a similar feeling? Yeah. Was it hard? Absolutely. I would tweak this just before, because the general population is not going to be able to sustain uh, a lot of the demand in this. So I did 100 overhead dumbbell lunges. I switched every 10 reps, uh, then 50 single dumbbell box step ups. And that's the same way we did in the open uh, in the last couple of years is hold the dumbbell on the shoulder. We don't really want to hold it in the farmer hold because it's just it's too awkward. You're not gonna be able to move as well. And then max strict handstand push-ups, and that hit me like a ton of bricks. Uh, and that put me in a position that I was hitting singles and doubles for the majority of it, rather than what I thought I would hit is somewhere in the three to five reps at a time. So with that being said, how I would modify this uh, after testing it for class, I wanna still keep it in that 10 minute range and I wanna be able to, to put these movements somewhat in the same order. I am interested in getting people on the wall for handstand push-ups. So how do I change it? It's still gonna be a 10 minute AMRAP. From there, I'm looking at the lunges. I'm gonna cut them down, definitely cut them down. I'm gonna go 40 overhead lunges. Instead of max, I'm gonna give a number. So we're gonna go 20 strict handstand push-ups. I'm gonna go back to the box for 40 dumbbell step-ups. And then 20 strict handstand push-ups and make it a complete AMRAP. So if you get through it, you're going back to the lunges and so on. Uh, this is just gonna get a better stimulus for everyone total because a lot of people can get hung up on the, the handstand push-ups. Also, that, the lunges is definitely more lunges than you would do in the, the 200 foot in that open workout. So moving on, Monday, I did this one, and holy cow, was it hard. It reminded me of 17.1, that's what I was going for, because I think it is a very, very high possibility we see that open workout again. Um, so this is, was just, just about, uh, 15 box jumps shy and 30 dumbbell reps uh, shy of the total in the open workout. I did very well with this. It made me run outside afterwards uh, because I needed air. It put me in that, that state, but it is very, very possible that we see that workout. So uh, I wanted to test something like that. I'm not giving this because of the, the amount of uh, pressure and the the hurt it puts on you. Uh, I don't really want to give that because it would just put people in a poor spot for the remainder of the week uh, or the next three or four days. So it's been, you have to be really on top of everybody um, as far as how to approach the next two to three days. Uh, this being said, I did this three days before it snowed a lot. So I knew I wasn't going to pull any barbell from the ground up until uh, it snowed because I knew I, knew I needed to shovel. So it's being smart, thinking ahead. What do we have ahead of us? That's why I give everybody the program a full week in advance. Uh, so how would I do this uh, for class? I'd make it an EMOM or an interval. So if I'm going EMOM style, and I, I'm not really concerned with the, the number of reps for this uh, at this point. Uh, so I can go 40 seconds of Burpee box jump over as the first minute, second minute. Uh, I can keep a, a 
consistent number of dumbbell snatch. So I can say, okay, we're gonna do 16 dumbbell snatches. And then choose a, a time frame so we can do this in say 12 minutes. That is gonna be safer. It's gonna allow us to kind of breathe a little bit in between movements, uh, but also give us a good stimulus to prep for something that may happen again. Last one I did on Wednesday. This one is the closest to what I am actually going to be giving. Uh, so I, I tested this with Coach Kyle, a couple members. I did two and a half on, two and a half off at my C5, my newer C5, and we'll go over that for 10 rounds. I have no intention of giving class 10 rounds of this. Class is getting five. Uh, but the only thing I'm changing is the cadence. Uh, we all did C5. It was brutal for 10 rounds, uh, but we did it. Had we not all, all four of us done it together, we may have not been uh, lasting all 10 rounds. So for class, the only change for class is going to be, it's two and a half bike at C4 to C5. So you have that, that wiggle room and then the two and a half rest. Now with this, we wanna be very, very conscious of our cadences. Just put up a recent video of adding C6, C7 to understand more of these. Um, so if you have tweaked your numbers, if you felt like, oh, I can push C5 a little more, stay honest with your actual C5 for this because it's gonna come back to bite you if you try too much too early. Uh, because if your C5 is say 65, and you're pushing 67, 68, and you try that in this, first two rounds, you may be able to get away with it, but after that, it's gonna catch you and you're gonna end up dropping. You may drop down to 63, 64. Uh, so just stay honest with your original C5 and maybe you can push towards the end. For those of us unsure, start the first couple of rounds at C4 and then if you can push uh, from there, absolutely do that. So this is, some testing, I don't always test because I don't always need to. I know the stimulus I'm looking for with the combination. I have the experience uh, of doing it myself, coaching it uh, and programming it so that I do know a lot of it, but there are times when I am wrong and it's better to be wrong when I'm testing it rather than just give it and then say, oh, I probably should have tweaked that beforehand. So a little inside the program, uh, any questions with, with these or anything else, please reach out. Thanks.